So yeah, did you hear that local postal clerk? The item that you thought was a real accordion that you made me pay an extra $25 postage due on actually won the Grammy for Best Special Edition Limited Packaging. Yeah, it actually had albums and a book in it, which would have qualified for media mail. Not that I'm bitter or anything. Greetings one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. This is just going to be a quick little post-Grammys uh, video, a little bit further post than I was counting on because I was hoping to have this out early last week, so sorry about that, but you know what happens. Uh, best laid plans, as they say. One thing leads to another. Hold everything! Before I go any further, I need to mention that I literally just got done doing a critic cast with Sam Bennett, which he plans on uploading later this week. So be sure to keep an eye out for it. The link to his Criticast network and to his standalone channel are both down in my description below, so be sure to subscribe to both and keep an eye out for it. Okay, Tom, as you were saying. But anyway, uh, yeah, it was a good show. Um, what I saw of it anyway, yeah, the the live tweet thing went a little bass backwards, as did my watching the show. Uh, I just assumed wrongly, as it turns out, that living on the West Coast, I wasn't going to be able to watch the show until 8 o'clock my time. Because, you know, I'm, I watch a few shows on CBS, and so, you know, the ads that they were showing, you know, the Grammys live, Sunday, February 10th, live at 8 p.m. So what else was I supposed to think, right? Uh, but as it turns out, as I... Granted, I should have checked the program guide on my TV ahead of time if I'd done that. I would have seen that they started showing the Gra Grammy show live at 5 o'clock my time, so... Yeah, so yeah, that kind of threw the uh, live tweet thing out of whack. It got a little bass backwards, as I said. But I would like to thank those of you who did follow along and uh, like and reply to my tweets. Uh, I noticed that Sam Bennett followed along for a little while. I think Noah from SMEB Reviews followed, and um, uh, Garrett from Young Entertainment Specialist uh, you followed along for, for a while, too. So I hope you were amused and enlightened and uh, otherwise enjoyed my ramblings, uh, Grammy-related ramblings for the night. Uh, and ho yeah, hopefully next year's will go a little bit more smoothly. I will know in advance to that I can watch them at the actual live East Coast time, uh, translated to West Coast time. So uh, yeah, here's to a much smoother uh, live tweet next year if I choose to take part. Uh, yeah, this year's Grammys was a little bit of an anomaly in that uh, there were so many nominees that I was actually interested in uh, whether or not they won. So uh, hopefully this coming year for music will be as... Uh, exciting and as as grammy worthy as this past year was so we shall see i guess uh, next february but yeah the show was great what i saw of it as i said um i enjoyed the performances that i saw um the aretha franklin tribute with uh, fantasia fantasia just absolutely killed it as i as i knew she would i mean I, i'm not a huge fan of her i've only got one of her cds i think but uh, whenever i hear her or see her she's just mesmerizing i mean she's just fantastically talented and then, uh, well, Sean Mendez and Miley Cyrus did In My Blood. And, you know, Sean Mendez fan, what can I say? Uh, it was a great performance as well. Um, and Casey Musgraves. I'm a Casey Musgraves fan as well. You you guys know that. Uh, she she did fantastically with uh, her song Rainbow. And uh, the Janelle Monae medley I thought was also a, a great, great performance. Uh, so it, it makes me sorry that I didn't see the rest of the performances. Uh, they were, yeah, a good show in that regard. And then, of course, there are the awards themselves. Uh, that's, to be honest, that's the reason I tuned into the show, is to see who wins the awards. I mean, the performances are okay. I don't mind them at all. But yeah, I like to see who wins the awards. Uh, I figured I'd go through uh, the list of the ones that I feel like commenting on, and I'm going to go through them kind of backwards in order of, you know, least important to most important, I guess you'd say. Uh, but yeah, first of all is Beck, uh, who won two awards for his album Colors, uh, Best Alternative Album and the Best Engineered Album Non-Classical. So uh, yeah, I thought it was a really good album, so uh, congratulations to Beck for winning that uh, those two awards. And then of course, there's my pal Al. He won his fifth Grammy Award this year for it, it was for his uh, Squeezebox collection, uh, Best Boxed or Special Limited Edition Packaging. So yeah, that was... Uh, a fantastic and well-deserved award. Of course, being the Al fan that I am, I'm always happy when he wins a Grammy. And then for Best Reggae Album, we saw Sting and Shaggy win that for 44876, their collaborative album. 
Uh, as you know, I was not fond of that album. I thought it was a disappointment. But hey, I saw nothing wrong with Sting and Shaggy going home with that award. As for Best Jazz Vocal Album, uh, I was not familiar with the winner, Cecile McLaurin Savant, uh, but I am familiar with two of the nominees for that category, so I kind of would have liked to have seen either of them win. That is uh, Kurt Elling. I actually have two of his albums. I, I really enjoy him. Uh, his first album I acquired by way of my sister's collection, so that's kind of a connection between me and my sister. So I like his stuff, and I also have Raul Midon's first album. Uh, he's, he's a really gifted artist. I don't know why I don't have more of his stuff, but uh, yeah, he was a, uh, a nominee in that category as well, so it would have been nice to see one of them win. I don't know if either of them already have a Grammy or not. I would have to look that up, so uh, <laughs> yay for research before my videos. But anyway, uh, for Best New Age Album, uh, one of the nominees was Jim Kimo West, who is actually the longtime guitarist for Weird Al Yankovic. Uh, and he actually has a solo recording career of his own, uh, has had for many years, and so I actually, I don't think I've actually ever heard any of his solo stuff, but uh, it would have been nice to have seen him win a Grammy, but uh, he uh, unfortunately did not win that award, so uh, better luck for his next album. I really do have to try some of his stuff out, because I was just absolutely amazed at his work when I saw Al last year in this uh, uh, ridiculously self-indulgent and ill-advised vanity tour, uh, so yeah, I need to check out his stuff. Uh, best Country Solo Performance, Casey Musgraves, of course, won for Butterflies. But uh, I wouldn't have minded at all seeing uh, Maren Morris win uh, for her the track that she did for the uh, Elton John tribute album. She sang Mona Lisa's and Mad Hatter's. Uh, so yeah, for you know the fact that Casey Musgraves went home with uh, was it three Grammys or four uh, this this time? It would have been nice to have uh, seen the wealth get spread around a little bit and. I wouldn't have mind, minded at all Maren Morris winning, at, winning that award, because uh, I do like her stuff. I have her debut album, which is really good, I thought. Uh, for Best R&B Album, I saw that her won, and I'm not familiar with her. <laughs> uh, but I was really, really hoping that Leon Bridges was going to take that one home, because uh, obviously uh, his album, his latest album, Good Thing, was uh, one of my favorite of the year. So, uh, yeah, I would have liked to have seen him win. Uh, he did win, though, for uh, in a tie, actually, for Best Traditional R&B Performance uh, for his song, The Bed Ain't Worth the Hand. He actually tied in winning the award with P.J. Morton featuring Yeba for their song, How Deep Is Your Love. I'm actually not familiar with uh, P.J. Morton, so, uh, but hey, congratulations to uh, Leon Bridges for taking home one Grammy. And while it was nice to see Greta Van Fleet take home at least one Grammy award, they won the Best Rock Album Grammy last year. Uh, I mean, because they are a talented band, uh, so it was nice to see them take home at least one award, but at the same time, I was really glad they did not win Best New Artist, uh, since, I mean, after all, their sound is rather derivative, so it would have been a little uh, crappy to see them <laughs> win that award. Uh, hopefully they will find their new sound, uh, their, their own sound, as their uh, recording career progresses. Uh, best Rock Song, uh, that went to Mass Seduction by St. Vincent. But, uh, and, you know, that was a perfectly decent song, but I also, at the same time, I rather enjoyed 21 Pilots' Jumpsuit, so, and that was in with the nomination, so I kind of would have liked to have seen that win, because that is a, a very innovative and uh, original song. And Chris Cornell won a posthumous Grammy this year for Best Rock Performance. Uh, that was kind of a nice thing to see. I'm not necessarily a Chris Cornell fan, not for, not for any particular reason. I've just never bothered checking out his stuff, really. Uh, but still, it was nice to see that uh, one last honor bestowed upon him. I would have liked to have seen Shawn Mendes grab the Grammy for the pop vocal album category, so uh, for that reason I was a little bit disappointed to see Ariana Grande's Sweetener win, uh, especially considering the rather mixed reviews I've seen and read about that album. And I obviously wished that uh, Tony Bennett and Diana Krall had won the traditional pop vocal album category for their uh, collaborative album. And I would have been okay with uh, Barbara Streisand winning as well. Uh, she would have actually won for The Music, The Memories, and The Magic. That's the album she was nominated for this year. Uh, her latest album, Walls, came out too late to be considered uh, for eligibility, but uh, here's to next year. As for the Best Pop Duo or Group Performance category, that actually had uh, a few nominees that I would have been totally happy with. Uh, Justin Timberlake and Chris Stapleton for Say Something. That was a fantastic song an awesome song, probably the only really good song off of uh, Justin Timberlake's album this year. Uh, Tony Bennett and Diana Krall, uh, they were nominated for Swonderful. 
Backstreet Boys for Don't Go Breaking My Heart. Uh, I enjoyed that song as well. But of course, in the end, we all knew that A Star Was Born was going to walk away with at least one Grammy this year, so uh, that was one of their wins. And yes, uh, also, I really wanted to see Shawn Mendes, and uh, perhaps more to the point with this would be Teddy Geiger, uh, win the Song of the Year Grammy for In My Blood, because uh, that was uh, and yeah, that was probably my biggest disappointment of the night, and uh, I really enjoyed that song. I think I mentioned why in my uh, favorite songs of the year uh, video, the, the end of last year, was it's the first song of his that really made me look at Shawn Mendes as an artist that had the potential for longevity, for, you know, an adult career. So, yeah, it was a, a great song, and uh, at least it was nominated, right? I mean, that's what we can we can say for all of these uh, artists is at least they were nominated. And in a in such a wide world of music, uh, you know, to be nominated for a Grammy is an honor in itself. So, And that brings us down to Album of the Year. And for that award, there were really two contenders that I was hoping one of which would win. And so it was a minor disappointment that one of them did not win. That was Janelle Monae's Dirty Computer. I was kind of rooting for that one. But fortunately, the other one that I was rooting for did walk away with the, with the award. Uh, Casey Musgraves, well, Golden Hour, she won that award, of course. And she also actually won two other Grammys, one for Best Country Album and for Best Country Song for Space Cowboy. So yeah, congratulations to Casey Musgraves for uh, cleaning up at the Grammys quite well this year. Uh, that's a fantastic album if you haven't heard it yet. Uh, it was in my top three, as you probably saw in my Albums of the Year uh, video last year. And if I may be allowed to expound for a few minutes on the subject of the Album of the Year, uh, I was a little curious, so I went on to Wikipedia the other day and uh, downloaded the full list of all of the Album of the Year winners and nominees throughout the history of the Grammy Awards. And I printed them out, highlighting the winners in green and the nominees in uh, yellow from over the years. And to my astonishment, I actually have uh, 29 Album of the Year winners in my uh, m music collection and 62 of the nominees. Uh, yeah, my brain sometimes is kind of uh, weird with... Uh, it's kind of fascinated with statistics and uh, things like this. Uh, not about everything, just about certain things. I, it's, it's just something weird in my brain. So I thought I would uh, present you with a few curious uh, statistics or factoids about uh, the Album of the Year Grammy and how it relates to my music collection. Now, the earliest Album of the Year in my collection is from back in 1961, and uh, the artist actually made an appearance at the Grammy Awards this year uh, because he also won the Best New Artist Grammy that year, and he was presenting this past year's award with Alessia Cara, who I think won last year for Best New Artist. Yes, this is uh, Bob Newhart. Yeah, he's uh, a lot of you might know him nowadays from his uh, appearances on The Big Bang Theory. But yeah, he was an absolutely hilarious comedian uh, back in the day. I don't know how this kind of humor would translate to the present day. Some of it would probably be lost uh, through, you know, the, the prism of time, I guess you'd say. But yeah, the button-down mind of Bob Newhart won the Grammy for Album of the Year in 1961. And uh, he also won Best New Artist that year, as I said. He also won a third award for best, I believe it was best comedy performance. Uh, he put out two albums actually uh, during the eligibility year for the 1961 Grammys, and I think that his second album won the best comedy recording uh, Grammy award. So, yeah, that was that was kind of cool. And there were a couple other fascinating little uh, tidbits of knowledge, little factoids that I gleaned from analyzing this uh, data. Uh, I actually have there are actually four different three-year-in-a-row spans whose albums of the year that I have as well as a couple of uh, seven out of ten year spans. So, of course, having as many as I do, you know, 29 of them, you know, that, that was bound to happen. And there are actually some a few years in which I have the winner and all but one of the nominees, and those years are 1990, 2000, and 2007. And then there, of course, were some, uh, some of the driest periods uh, where, you know, I have the fewest winners or nominees, from uh, 1959 to 1962, I only have one, and that is the winner that I just showed you, Bob Newhart. Uh, from 1972 to 1975, I had one winner, which was uh, Tapestry by Carol King. She won in 1972. And uh, the nominee, the only one nominee that I have is Caribou by Elton John. And he was nominated, I think, in 1975. And then from uh, 
2015 to 2018, ironically, the most recent dry period, I only had one nominee from that entire span, and that is Multiply by Ed Sheeran. So yeah, a few fascinating little tidbits about the Grammy Awards as they relate to my music collection. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, comments, suggestions, requests, constructive criticisms, any or all of the above, whether about this video or anything on my channel or about music in general. I encourage the feedback. I'd love to hear from you. Also, please be sure to subscribe as well. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. And check out all my past videos to see what you might have missed. Plus, I invite you to check out my friends and fellow YouTubers channels, which are all linked to in my description below. They're all very much worth your time. They wouldn't be in that list if they weren't. Also, I'm now on Twitter, and you can find a link to my Twitter feed in the description below. Be sure to follow me there so you can enjoy my stray thoughts and random musings about music and so forth. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.